What's good, bottom line viewers? AC here. It's that time of the year where NFL fans have shifted from thinking what could have been of their teams last season to what could be of their teams for the upcoming season. A big part of building your team is through the draft. With the draft just two months away, it's mock draft season. Who will go number one? Who will your favorite team draft? And who will be the steal of the draft? Right here at the bottom line view, we will have you covered with our very own mock drafts leading up to the NFL draft in Philadelphia. And it all starts off with the first one. So much will change from this mock draft to the next. You know, we still have the NFL Combine, February 28th to March 6th, which in the past we've seen guys rise and fall solely on their Combine performances. Also, teams will look to fill the needs in free agency and through trades before the draft. So this mock will indeed change. But for all you guys out there, comment below who you want on your team who do you think they're going to draft? If you have mock draft suggestions, put them in the comments below. But right now, let's get right into it. With the number one pick, I have the Cleveland Browns selecting D.N. Miles Garrett out of Texas A&M. This was the easiest choice of the mock. Garrett is miles above any of the other draft prospects. He is an elite pass rusher with great strength. And I also think he's suited to play outside linebacker in the 3-4 defense. Cleveland has a lot of needs, but I don't think they can afford to pass on Garrett. Number two, I have the San Francisco 49ers taking QB Mitch Trubisky. San Fran needs a QB for the future, and new head coach Kyle Shanahan would love a rookie QB that he could mold and grow with. Trubisky has the most upside out of the QBs in the draft. Very good in the pocket, strong arm, and makes short passes with great accuracy, but still might not be a day one starter. This pick could change with the 49ers being interested in Garoppolo and other NFL QBs. At number three, I have the Chicago Bears taking D.N. Jonathan Allen out of Alabama. Allen, who was named the 2016 best defensive player in the nation, is a true talent. Last year with Alabama, he had 69 tackles, 16 tackles for loss, and led the team with 10 and a half sacks. Chicago has a lot more other needs at other positions, but at number three, I don't think they can not take Allen because he'll be the best player available. Allen would fit in nicely at defensive tackle on the Bears and help get pressure from the interior of the line. At number four, I have the Jacksonville Jaguars taking safety Jamal Adams out of LSU. The Jags need help on their secondary, and Adams is not only the best safety in the draft, but is the best defensive back in the draft. He is a natural-born leader at safety, commands his teammates on the field, has great range, and is able to step up in the run game and make tackles look easy. At number five, I have the Tennessee Titans, who got this pick from the Rams last year for the Rams to move up and get Jared Goff. I have them taking corner Marshawn Lattimore out of Ohio State. The Titans need to start building their defense, especially their secondary. Lattimore is the best corner in the draft, and that is saying a lot because the corners in this draft are really good. Lattimore is an athletic freak and reaches top speed quickly when he has to turn and run. This could change because there are some very good NFL corners going to be available in the free agency, so we'll see what happens. At number six, I have the New York Jets taking running back Leonard Fournette out of LSU. The Jets have other needs, but I don't think they can pass on the best running back in this draft. With Forte getting older, I think the Jets need a bona fide star on the offense running the ball. Fournette is built like a linebacker and has speed like a receiver, hard to bring down, and has a second gear in the open field. He also has injury concerns, but if healthy, could help out any team right away. At number seven, I have the Los Angeles Chargers. Yeah, it's still strange saying that. Taking safety Malik Hooker out of Ohio State. The Chargers secondary has not been the same since they let Eric Weddle walk. Hooker is a top 10 talent in this draft. He has amazing instincts on the field, tracking the football, great ball skills, had seven interceptions last year, and has good size for a safety. Only one year of experience as a starter, but has tons of upside to get even better in the NFL. At number eight, I have the Carolina Panthers taking D.N. Solomon Thomas out of Stanford. The Panthers' number one need is offensive tackle, but taking the best tackle in the draft, Ryan Ramchek, here would be a reach. Panthers need help getting to the quarterback. Thomas is one of the best edge rushers in this draft and will fill a need for the Panthers' defense. Thomas is powerful for his size, quick feet and hands, and has very good pursuit and range. At 9, I have the Cincinnati Bengals taking linebacker Reuben Foster out of Alabama. Cincinnati needs an anchor at linebacker to help their defense. Perfect is just getting older and is not as good as he once was. Foster, the best true linebacker in this draft, is suited to play outside linebacker in a 4-3 or inside in a 3-4. 
Foster is a strong tackler, specializing in stop of the run, and has incredible lateral range. At number 10, I have the Buffalo Bills taking quarterback Deshaun Watson out of Clemson. With the Bills looking to move on from Tyrod Taylor, Watson would be a great replacement to pivot the Bills. He is more NFL-ready than Trubisky, but not as much upside. Watson comes into the NFL with a great resume, making it to the last two national championships and winning this past year. Watson is calm in the pocket, can make good throws on the run, and in college was a clutch player. At 11, I have the New Orleans Saints taking corner Sidney Jones out of Washington. The Saints need to improve their secondary, especially playing in a division with Matt Ryan, Cam Newton, and Jameis Winston. I have Jones as the second best corner in this draft. Jones was an instant starter as a freshman, and he just got better since then. He is good in press, physical at the line, good in zone, and he tracks the ball really well. At 12, I have the Cleveland Browns, who got this pick from the Eagles last year when the Eagles moved up to get Carson Wentz, taking tight end O.J. Howard out of Alabama. I think the Browns will have a hard time passing on one of the best tight end prospects in the last couple years. Howard would complement Gary Barnage really well and give whoever is at QB an elite target. Some say take a QB here, but I have heard the Browns are not sold on taking a QB in the first round. Howard is a tremendous athlete that has great size and speed with raw talent. Howard is one of those guys, though, that scouts will look to see how he performs at the combine. At 13, I have the Arizona Cardinals taking wide receiver Corey Davis out of Western Michigan. The Cards need a receiver to complement an aging Larry Fitzgerald and help out with Carson Palmer in his final years. I think an argument can be made that Mike Williams out of Clemson is a better receiver than Corey Davis. But Davis has the resume that puts him above right now. Davis produced in all four years in college, made DBs in his conference look silly. He is a touchdown machine and has good size and speed to be successful in the NFL. At 14, I have the Indianapolis Colts taking running back Dalvin Cook out of Florida State. It's easy to say the Colts need to address their O-line and keep luck alive, but uh, I don't think they do this in the first round. The Colts need a playmaker in the backfield, and Gore has maybe a year left, if that. Uh, Cook is just behind Fournette, but ahead of the rest of the field in this draft class. He is a great runner with unbelievable balance, is very elusive, and can create plays on his own. At 15, I have my Philadelphia Eagles, who got this pick from the Vikings for Sam Bradford. Suckas taking corner Marlon Humphrey out of Alabama. The Eagles are in desperate need for a strong cover corner. I was thinking also a receiver here, but I think Humphrey is a bit better at 15. Humphrey comes with a pro-style defense and has great size to be a strong cover corner. He also thrives in zone. Humphrey, if drafted, would be a day one starter in Philly. At 16, I have the Baltimore Ravens taking corner Tease Tabber out of Florida. The Ravens have a lot of needs. I could easily see them taking a pass rusher here, but I think Tabber is a great talent and can contribute at corner right away. Tabber has pro size and pro speed, pure cover corner, and has good recovery speed when beat. He is, though, one of these guys that is going to have a lot to prove at the combine because people want to see exactly how fast he is. At 17, I have Washington Redskins taking linebacker Zach Cunningham out of Vanderbilt. The Redskins could use some help on their defense, especially at inside linebacker. Cunningham is made to play middle linebacker for an attacking 4-3 defense and can play well in his rookie year. Cunningham is a playmaker, plays downhill, shoots gaps, and always has a nose for the football. At 18, I have the Tennessee Titans taking receiver Mike Williams out of Clemson. It's time the Titans give Marcus Mariota a big-time receiving threat on the outside, which he has lacked since being drafted. Williams could be rated as the best wideout in the draft. Williams has prototypical height, weight, and speed to be a very good receiver in the NFL, has potential to be a number one receiver, great hands, and breakaway speed. At 19, I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking outside linebacker Tim Williams out of Alabama. The Bucs need to find someone to rush the passer from the outside. Williams has the ability and size to be a 4-3 DN in the NFL. Williams is a pure pass rusher, but not the greatest at stopping the run, but he can get to the quarterback with ease and has multiple moves to get around tackles. At number 20, I have the Denver Broncos taking offensive tackle Ryan Ramchek out of Wisconsin. The Broncos' main need is a tackle, and I think they address it with their first round pick, taking the best tackle in the draft in Ramchek. Also, they need someone to protect Romo? Maybe. Ramchek is very athletic and smart and reminds a lot of people of Joe Staley. 
He has the athleticism to play left tackle day one and has great balance and body control. At 21, I have the Detroit Lions taking DN Derek Barnett out of Tennessee. The Detroit defensive line has had trouble getting to the quarterback ever since Sue left. This pick is sure to change, but as of right now, I think Barnett is the best pass rusher available at this point. He has explosive speed, good hands, and the ability to get by blockers and great awareness that always keeps him in a play. At 22, I have the Miami Dolphins taking DN Taco Charlton out of Michigan. Dolphins have some great pieces on their D-line already in Wake and Sue, but I believe the Dolphins are looking for another defensive end to play on the other side of Wake. I believe Charlton could be that guy. Charlton has pro size and speed for the NFL, very good at the snap, quick, makes tackles, and has good football IQ. The only blemish on Charlton is that he did not produce the greatest numbers in college. At 23, I have the New York Giants taking tight end David Njoku out of the U. Looking at the Giants' needs, I don't think they get a value running back or linebacker at this pick. They could go D-tackle because there's going to be some available, but I think they cannot pass on getting an athletic tight end like Njoku. Giants adding the second-best tight end in this draft would improve their offense day one. Njoku is a supreme athlete and has great speed and size for tight end, great hands, can catch in traffic, and is a big-time playmaker. At 24, I have the Oakland Raiders taking D-tackle Caleb Brantley out of Florida. We all know what the Raiders' offense can do, but it's time to add to their defense. Adding a powerful defensive tackle to their line is a must. Brantley is a prototypical 4-3 defensive tackle, which many compare him to Aaron Donald. He is powerful on the line, plays hungry with passion, and can stand his ground against double teams. At 25, I have the Houston Texans taking guard Forrest Lamp out of Western Kentucky. One of the Texans' biggest need is at the O-line. It's fair to say that they're okay with their defense, but keeping their QB, whoever that may be, off the ground is super key. Lamp can play each position on the line if needed. He played tackle in college, but scouts say he is suited more to be an NFL guard. He has got great size and speed. He's athletic. He's a competent pass and rush blocker and is good taking on big defensive linemen. At 26, I have the Seattle Seahawks taking offensive tackle Garrett Bowles out of Utah. It's no secret the Seahawks need help on the offensive line. They also could look to add a corner here, but if Bowles is available, the second best tackle in my opinion in this draft, they have to get him. Bowles has elite athletic abilities for a tackle, quickest feed in the draft for a tackle, and gets to blocks quick. He is very athletic, but has only played one year of FBS football and is still very raw. At 27, I have the Kansas City Chiefs taking outside linebacker Hassan Reddick out of Temple. The Chiefs are looking for someone to play inside linebacker and or a pass rusher. Reddick played OLB in a 4-3 in college, but scouts say he would be a good fit for a 3-4 MLB spot. Reddick has had injury problems, but when he has played, he has shown explosiveness. Very reactive, gets to the ball quick, plays on instincts, and moves around the field with ease. At number 28, I have the Dallas Cowboys taking corner Quincy Wilson out of Florida. The Cowboys defense improved a lot last year, but in the playoffs showed that they need to get better defensively, especially in the secondary. Wilson can play corner or safety and has the size to do so. In college, always faced off against the best receiver. Not the fastest, but uses his strength and smarts to compete and has great anticipation and coverage. Has had some off-field issues, but plays with that edge you want. At 29, I have the Green Bay Packers taking outside linebacker T.J. Watt, brother of J.J. Watt, out of Wisconsin. The Packers need to find an outside linebacker like they have had in the past, like Clay Matthews, not last year's Clay Matthews, but a young Clay Matthews. Watt is that guy, would fit in perfectly from day one, had a great year with Wisconsin, attacks blockers with force, decent size and speed, hard worker, and he gets to the quarterback with relentless effort. At 30, I have the Pittsburgh Steelers taking outside linebacker Takaris McKinley out of UCLA. The Pittsburgh Steelers are looking for their next Joey Porter or Harrison, someone that can get to the QB. They also could use some help in their secondary, but if McKinley is available, they jump right on it. McKinley is equipped to play OLB on a 3-4 defense. He never takes a playoff, tiring out the offensive tackles. Great size and quickness. He still is raw, but with proper coaching, could be a future pro bowler.
At 31, I have the Falcons taking defense and Carl Lawson out of Auburn. Falcons don't have to worry much about their offense, but the defense needs some help. I don't mind their secondary. It's young. Same with their linebackers. But I do think they need to get another pass rusher. Beasley looks good, but Freeney is just getting way too old to be out there. Lawson fills that need. And at 32, I have the Super Bowl champ, the New England Patriots, taking safety Jabril Peppers out of Michigan. The Pats don't have too many needs. They just won the Super Bowl. But if anything, they could use another safety and or corner. Peppers is a perfect fit with the Pats. He is not the best in coverage, but a smart player. So with proper coaching and a good scheme, could be very good. Peppers is a guy that he could go as high as 10, but even drop to the third round. The combine will be huge for him. So that's that. Bottom line view, mock draft 1.0. Things will definitely change. I want to hear from all of you. Who should go where? What's your mock draft look like? And who do you want your team to draft? We will be back with the second mock draft after the combine. So everyone like, subscribe to the bottom line view, and take care. Until next time, I'm AC.